Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into an important health topic that affects many people poor blood circulation. You know that tingly feeling when your foot falls asleep? That's a usually harmless example of what happens when blood flow is restricted. But chronically poor circulation, that's a different story. We're talking about the flow of life throughout your body, delivering oxygen and nutrients and removing waste products. So let's get started and learn about the common causes of poor blood circulation and what you can do about them. Let's talk about something many of us are guilty of, living a sedentary lifestyle. It's a common issue in today's world, where technology and convenience often keep us glued to our seats. You know, spending hours glued to the screen, whether it's a computer, TV or phone. This screen addiction is more prevalent than ever, affecting people of all ages. Now imagine this, your circulatory system is like a network of highways, with your heart acting as the powerful pump that keeps the traffic moving. This intricate system is vital for delivering oxygen and nutrients to every part of your body. When you're inactive for long periods, it's like allowing those highways to become congested. Just as traffic jams can cause delays and frustration, poor circulation can lead to serious health issues. Your calf muscles, for instance, play a crucial role in pumping blood back to your heart. These muscles act as a secondary pump, aiding your heart in maintaining efficient blood flow. When you sit for hours on end, those muscles aren't getting the workout they need, leading to sluggish circulation. This inactivity can cause blood to pool in your legs, increasing the risk of blood clots and varicose veins. Think of it like this. Movement is medicine for your blood vessels. Regular physical activity helps to keep your arteries flexible and your blood pressure in check. Every step you take, every stretch you do, helps to keep your blood flowing smoothly. Simple activities like walking, stretching or even light exercises can make a significant difference. And it's not just about avoiding the sitting disease. Prolonged sitting has been linked to various health problems, including obesity, diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Even if you exercise regularly, prolonged sitting can counteract those benefits. It's essential to balance your workout routine with regular movement throughout the day. So what can you do? How can you combat the negative effects of a sedentary lifestyle? Well, first, set realistic goals. Start small and gradually increase your activity level. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise most days of the week. You don't have to become a marathon runner overnight. Incorporate movement into your daily routine in ways that feel manageable and sustainable. Start by incorporating more movement into your daily routine. Take frequent breaks to stand up, stretch or walk around especially if you have a desk job. These small actions can help break up long periods of sitting. Consider using a standing desk or taking short walks during your lunch break. Set a timer to remind yourself to move every hour. These reminders can be a simple yet effective way to ensure you're not sitting for too long at a stretch. And remember, even small changes can make a big difference in the long run. Gradually, Increasing your activity level can lead to significant health improvements over time. Your heart and blood vessels will thank you for it. By making these adjustments, you'll be taking important steps towards a healthier, more active lifestyle. We all know smoking is bad for us, right? It's a fact that's been drilled into our heads for years. But let's really break down just how devastating it is to your blood circulation. The impact is far more severe than most people realize. Picture this. You take a drag from a cigarette. It might seem harmless, just a moment of relaxation or stress relief. As the nicotine hits your bloodstream, it triggers a chain reaction that constricts your blood vessels, making them narrower. This isn't just a minor change, it's a significant restriction. Imagine trying to squeeze a thick milkshake through a tiny straw. That's what smoking does to your blood flow. The thicker the milkshake, the harder it is to get through. And the same goes for your blood. This constriction forces your heart to work harder to push blood through those narrowed pathways putting extra strain on your entire circulatory system. Your heart, already a tireless worker, now has to double its efforts. But it doesn't stop there. The damage is multifaceted and relentless. The chemicals in cigarettes also damage the lining of your blood vessels, making them more prone to inflammation and plaque buildup. This damage is not just superficial, it goes deep into the very structure of your vessels. This dangerous combination increases your risk of developing atherosclerosis a condition where arteries harden and narrow, restricting blood flow even further. Atherosclerosis is a silent killer, often progressing without symptoms until it's too late. And if that's not enough, smoking also decreases the amount of oxygen in your blood, depriving your organs and tissues of the vital nutrients they need to function properly. 
This oxygen deprivation can lead to a host of other health issues, compounding the damage. The bottom line is this. Smoking is like waging a war against your own body, and your circulatory system is on the front lines. Every puff is a new assault, weakening your defenses and compromising your health. Quitting smoking is the single best thing you can do for your health, including your circulation. The benefits start almost immediately and continue to grow over time. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Support groups, counseling, and even medications can help you on this journey. Remember, every step you take towards quitting is a step towards a healthier, longer life. Let's talk about diabetes, a condition that affects millions of people worldwide. Now, diabetes might not immediately come to mind when you think about poor circulation, but the two are closely intertwined. You see, when you have diabetes, your body struggles to regulate blood sugar levels. Over time, high blood sugar can damage your blood vessels, making them less efficient at transporting blood. Think of it like this. High blood sugar is like sandpaper rubbing against the delicate lining of your blood vessels, causing tiny tears and inflammation. This damage can lead to a buildup of plaque, narrowing those vital pathways and restricting blood flow. What's more, diabetes can also affect the nerves that control blood flow, further compounding the problem. This can lead to a condition called diabetic neuropathy, which often affects the feet and legs. The good news is that managing your blood sugar levels through diet, exercise and medication can significantly reduce your risk of developing circulation problems. Regular checkups with your doctor are crucial to monitor your blood sugar and catch any potential issues early on. Remember, knowledge is power when it comes to your health. By understanding the link between diabetes and circulation, you can take proactive steps to protect your vascular health. Let's talk about obesity and its impact on your blood circulation. Now, carrying extra weight doesn't just affect your joints and energy levels. It places a significant burden on your heart and blood vessels. Imagine this. For every extra pound of fat your body carries, your circulatory system has to create about a mile of new blood vessels to supply it. That's a lot of extra work for your heart. This increased workload can lead to high blood pressure, a major risk factor for heart disease and stroke. Think of your arteries as flexible pipes. High blood pressure puts constant pressure on those pipes, causing them to stiffen and lose their elasticity over time. This makes it harder for blood to flow efficiently, increasing the risk of damage to your arteries and other organs. Moreover, obesity is often linked to other conditions that can negatively impact circulation, such as high cholesterol and diabetes. The good news is that losing even a small amount of weight can make a big difference in improving your circulation and overall health. Focus on making sustainable lifestyle changes, such as incorporating regular exercise and adopting a balanced, nutritious diet. Let's delve into a condition known as peripheral artery disease, or PAD, which directly impacts blood circulation, especially in your limbs. This condition can significantly affect your quality of life if not addressed properly. Imagine your arteries are like a network of roads, intricately designed to transport blood throughout your body, ensuring every part gets the oxygen and nutrients it needs. PAD is like construction on those roads, narrowing them and restricting the flow of traffic. This construction is due to the buildup of fatty deposits or plaque, which can severely limit blood flow. This narrowing is often caused by plaque buildup, similar to what happens in coronary artery disease. But in this case, it affects the arteries in your legs, feet, and sometimes arms. Over time, this can lead to significant health issues if not managed properly. As the arteries narrow, blood flow to your extremities is reduced, leading to a range of symptoms. This reduced blood flow can cause discomfort and pain, making everyday activities more challenging. You might experience cramping or pain in your legs, especially during activity, a condition known as claudication. This pain can be quite severe and often limits your ability to walk or exercise. Other signs of PAD can include numbness or weakness in your legs or feet, coldness in your extremities, and even sores that heal slowly. These symptoms can be subtle at first, but tend to worsen over time. Now here's the thing about PAD. It's often a silent disease, meaning many people don't experience noticeable symptoms until the condition has progressed. This makes it crucial to be vigilant about your health and aware of any changes. That's why it's crucial to be aware of the risk factors, which include smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and family history of the disease. These factors can significantly increase your risk of developing PAD. If you notice any unusual symptoms, don't hesitate to talk to your doctor. Early intervention can make a significant difference in managing the disease and improving your quality of life. Early detection and treatment are key to managing PAD and preventing complications. 
Treatment options may include lifestyle changes, medications, and in some cases, surgical procedures to restore proper blood flow. By taking proactive steps, you can manage PAD effectively and maintain a healthy, active lifestyle. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more health tips. Remember, taking care of your circulatory system is vital for overall health and well-being. By understanding the causes of poor circulation, you can make informed choices to improve your vascular health and reduce your risk of complications. Stay healthy and see you next time.